Good morning. The reading this morning is from Ephesians 4, 1 through 14, and this is Paul speaking from prison in Rome. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. He himself granted that some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God is good all the time. God is good. Why don't you turn around and simply say, peace be with you. Can we say that? Peace be with you. Peace be with you, that means, hey, I know you. Amen. Can we all pray together? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for who we are and who you are in this place. God, we are so thankful that you call each one of us in this place. God, we give you thanks and we lift up the name of Jesus. We celebrate the faithfulness and the goodness of God in this place. God, as we continue to listen to you, God, soften our heart. Fill our heart with your joy and hope and salvation. God, we love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Since the October 7 attack on, on Israel, launching the nation into war, those three pictures have been on my heart and on my mind as well. Will you please show me the first picture? That's the first picture that I is on my mind. Second one, will you show me? Second one, he's weeping and he's in the middle of all the pains and struggles. He's comforting people in the midst of a struggle and pains. Jesus is weeping and praying for the people who are going through. In the history of the state of Israel, over the last 75 years, this war has been the most crazy and dangerous, devastating attack. I am not only praying for uh, Israel, but also praying for Gaza as well. We're not praying for Jews, not only praying for Jews, but we're also praying for Palestinians. I know complete peace on earth will not happen until the Lord returns. However, we do strongly believe that in the times of uncertainty and brokenness, chaos and unrest, Jesus Christ is our anchor. Amen to that. Jesus Christ is our peace and shalom. He is our joy and salvation to hold on to in these difficult times. Many people are searching for peace in the midst of chaos and unrest. 
Many people are praying for suffering and, and, and also at the same time praying for their brothers and sisters during this time of suffering and war. Let us continue to remind ourselves that we are called to be God's peacemakers and also we are called to pray for peace in this trouble and, and time and, and difficult moments. In the midst of chaos and uncertainty and unrest, we can have real and genuine peace, not only now, but also for eternity. By creating peace, putting our peace into action, and fully trusting in God's only Son, Jesus Christ, who is the author of our salvation. As we carefully take a look at the text today, Ephesians chapter 4 today, we learn that Paul uh, uh, did a call for unity among God's people. Before, before Paul talked about a call for unity, during the three chapters, Paul mentioned about uh, 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 the grace of God we receive freely and glorious detail, uh, amazing works and mysterious works God did for each one of us. God did all things for us freely. We always take for granted, but by the grace of God, we can live rightly and we can walk worthy of the calling with which you and I were called. Now Paul is emphasizing a worthy walk in Jesus Christ. Paul is telling each one of us what to do for a worthy walk and spiritual walk and eternal walk among God's people. Walking in, in loneliness and gentleness. Bearing with one another. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit for, for peace. No matter what, no matter what language and culture and tradition and color and background, in Jesus Christ, we are one. There is one body, one spirit, just as we are called in one hope of our calling. One Lord, one baptism, and one God, one Father of all, who is above all, who is through all and in you all. We are the body of Christ and even though we have a different colors, red and blue, sometimes our background is different, probably our color is different, our language is different, our tradition is different, but in Christ we are one. Paul was speaking to the believers in the prison and he was writing the letter to the people reminding them Hey, you know what? You don't belong to Paul. You don't belong to Peter. You don't belong to Jerusalem. You don't belong to Gaza. You don't belong to Jewish. You belong to Christ. Sometimes we disagree. However, do not hate each other. Do not create any evil stuff. Create the unity of the Spirit. Allow the Spirit of God work unity among us. I know sometimes it's hard in our church. Sometimes it's hard in our community, in our nation, in the world we live today. We have God's powerful gospel message based on our faith in our church, in our eternal journey. Even we are different. We have something in common. That Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay and purchase our debt. He was buried and rose again. He ascended to heaven and he promised he'll come again. That's our common value and that's our common gospel based on our faith. We have the same mission Jesus Christ given for each one of us to do in our spiritual journey. Love God. Love others. Truly love God with all your heart and mind and soul. Deeply love God. And deeply care for other people. Spreading the hope and the love of God. And spreading the gospel. Beyond the world and beyond the community. We have the same motive. Motivation by exalting the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Glorifying the name of Jesus. And in celebrating the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Extending God's kingdom on here. As it is in heaven. Because we have been loved. We have been invited, we have been forgiven, and we have been welcomed, we have been renewed, and we have been reconciled 
by His grace. I know. I know unity has been has 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 been always always hard. But we, as a body of Christ, continue to seek for for the pursuit of the unity and then continue to create peacemaking in our church, in our spiritual walk. We should deeply care for the people, not for the building. We should deeply care for the real and loving, spirit-filled faith community in this place. In order to keep our community, faith community, with our war and division, we have to listen to one another. We have to listen to what Paul is speaking to our hearts today. Paul requires that we need to put off our old self. We need to follow the way of Jesus, empty ourselves. We need to make ourselves humble before God and humble before others. We need to get rid of our former manner of our lives. We need to get rid of our, our human desires and follow God's desires. We need to get rid of our human passion. We need to follow God's passion in our journey. And not an easy one. But we need to stick together. We're not going to create any division here. Let us continue to seek for God's peace among God's people. And in this world we live today. Let us put off ourselves and renew our minds to ask for the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace in Jesus Christ. Let us strive for holiness. Holiness of heart and holiness of mind. Pray without ceasing. Pray for one another. Even we pray for our enemies. Pray for our enemies and bless those who persecute us. Count all joy when we go through a various, a very difficult trials and tribulations. Friends, we as God's church, we as God's body, remember in the Gospel of John 17, when Jesus was kneeling down before God and he was praying for the highly priestly prayers, we also have to pray for one another. We have to pray for ourselves as Jesus was praying for himself. We should pray for all believers as Jesus was praying for all believers. We must pray for the church as Jesus was praying for the church. We ought to pray for unity. We ought to pray for peace for the world. We live today as Jesus was praying for the unity and peace in this world. We strongly feel compelled to pray for all so that we may experience the unity and the peace of the Spirit. And also peace of God will lead them to the cry of His heart in the future. Christian unity is, is a high call. But sometimes, at the same time, it's a hard call. Creating peace work is a hard sometimes. Sometimes, uh, uh, walking with you is difficult. Agreeing everything is difficult. Joining kingdom war is not easy. But Hebrews chapter 12 verse 12, 14 reminds each one of us that we are called to strive for peace with everyone. We do every possible way to live in peace. To strive for peace with everyone. Remember what Jesus spoke to his disciples and, believe, and, and believers 2,000 years ago. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they will be called sons and daughters of God in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. We as the body of Christ, we as a church, will continue to be God's children. We will continue to create peace and, and, and we will continue to put our faith and peace into action. We will continue to promote God's peace around the world and around this community. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Also, also continue to pray for the peace of Gaza. A lot of people are going through difficult moments. Pray for peace in every nation, in every country. A, a, a call to pray for our enemies. Sometimes we don't know how to pray for our enemies. We don't know how to love our enemies. Sometimes we don't know how to bless our enemies. We just stay away from our enemies. No, don't do that. Pray. And spreading the peace of God 
and, and praying for our enemies. We must fight hard for peace. We must pray for hard for our enemies. Friends, sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you see what's going on in the world we live today. We're not called to create conflict or division. We're not called to repay evil for evil or blood for e blood. We are called to love God and we are called to love others. We are called to serve people and live like Jesus Christ here on earth. We are called for unity that empowers each and every one of us to move forward with kindness, hope, love, and divine harmony. Church, listen. We are called to press on toward uh, peace by any uh, uh, passable means in our journey. In Jesus Christ, we keep moving forward with the unity of God's divine spirit within us. We're not going to give up on hope. We're not going to give up uh, our prayers. We're not going to give up our love. We'll continue to be God's people in the midst of uncertainty and unrest. Remember, as you go outside, you and I are called to love one another with brotherly affection, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 10. And we are also called to live in harmony with one another, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 16. Here is my prayer. Dear God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon you and upon me, upon our church, so that we can walk together humbly before God and before others. We will go outside, create peace, put our peace into action. Oh, loving God, loving and living God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven through us and through our church. Let your kingdom be extended here this place. Let your kingdom come so that we can go outside. We can share the love of Christ. We can share the peace of God. We can go outside and be God's peacemaker in the world of today. Can we all pray together? Let us pray. Dear God, we pray for peace. We pray for unity. We pray for our togetherness. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes uh, walking with someone is difficult. Saying yes to the people is difficult. Sometimes we don't even know how to bless our enemy. We don't even know how to pray for our enemies. And even we don't even know how to love our enemies. But we humbly ask for your guidance. We humbly ask for your uh, spirit, gentleness, your power and joy and hope. Even though in the, in the midst of all the crazy situations, uncertainty and unrest, Jesus Christ, you are our anchor. You are our spiritual foundation. We will keep moving forward with your divine kindness and love and grace and mercy and compassion and justice. We pray for uh, the Israel. We pray for the Gaza. We pray for the people who are going through difficult times in our town and in this nation, in the world we live today. God, please, please deeply care for the people who are going through difficult times in the world. Kiddos, all the children, all the youth, and elderly people, those who are wounded, those who are uh, 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 crying for the, their beloved ones, those who are searching for the bodies, those who are searching for the food, those who are searching for the shelters, those who are searching for the medicines, and doctors, and nurses, and the houses, and the government. God, will you please bless them? Will you please Reach out your hands and give them your comfort and joy and peace. God, thank you once again for calling each one of us as the peacemakers. We are your people. We are the people of God to put our faith into action. We will go outside, share the love of Christ, and make this nation 
as your nation. God will love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen.